Hi everyone, just wanted to say a massive good luck for the Literature Paper 2 exam happening on Monday tomorrow. Um, so I just wanted to give you a couple of last minute tips. This is for Edexcel students, okay? Obviously good luck if you're doing any of the other exam boards, but these tips are just for the Edexcel um, papers. So obviously to start off, we've got our 19th century fiction. So whatever it is, whether it's Jekyll and Hyde or Christmas Carol or whatever, um, the same kind of rules apply. So when you've got the extract in front of you, just like in paper one, know that the only thing you're being tested on is your ability to analyse the language and structure and form features, thinking about the impact on the reader. Now, if you get an extract and you think to yourself, holy moly, I don't know what's going on here. I don't even remember seeing this. Well, just keep calm, read it through a good few times and know that there will be things to say. OK, so if you're struggling to find metaphors or similes, personification, just have a little quick tricks like look out for some repetition, look out for some exclamation marks. Yeah. And then read around it and think, right, what's going on? The most important thing is that you're focusing on the impact. So maybe if you're struggling to find imagery, think, well, why that word? And then draw into that just to kind of get you going. All right. So that's the first question, which is 20 marks. Analysis, analysis, analysis. Second part of that question is, of course, the wider. You do not need context, okay? There are no marks awarded for context. It's all AO1. Obviously, being aware of context is useful because it might help you understand why a character behaves in a certain way, but you will not get marks for paragraphs relating things to the social historical context of the time like you would have got in the Shakespeare. So that means that your focus needs to be on kind of broad discussion of the significance of characters and moments, okay? So multiple textual references. So when I say textual references, yes, I do mean quotations, but I also mean paraphrasing, but just make sure that you're using the writer name frequently so that you don't accidentally end up writing about a character as if they're real. So for example, you might say things like, Stevenson deliberately crafts this moment uh, to demonstrate or foreshadow Jekyll's immoral practices. Or you might say something like, um, Dickens deliberately crafts Fred to be very, very kind to, to symbolise what Scrooge's potential could be. Do you see what I mean? So you're still, you're still writing with a critical style, okay? Um, but you're just making sure that it's very much like, why has the writer done it this way? What were the writer's intentions, okay? And if you lose your quotations, like I said, detailed paraphrase, but don't be frightened to drop in single word quotations or little phrases with explanation all the way around it. The most important thing, yeah? They wanna see that you know the text. That's what they're looking for. You know it, you understand what happens in a range of places. Okay, then we get the poetry. So first bit is the anthology. Now, in terms of timing split, you've had 55 minutes on the 19th century, so 27 and a half minutes per paper. With the anthology, you've got 35 minutes for this part, okay? You'll get one poem in front of you, then you've got to go to your memory for the second one. Okay, so what are you being assessed on? Your ability to analyse language structure and form, yeah? Your comparisons and context. So you do need context here. My advice, introduction, message of the poem, context that they sit in, then paragraph on form and the effect. Okay, there's no point in saying uses an ABAB rhyme scheme without anything of importance to say about why. And, you know, be specific. He uses a rigid ABAB rhyme scheme to echo the structure, the rigid structure of the city that he's critiquing. That is much better than he uses an ABAB rhyme scheme to make it flow better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so be specific. And then you're going to move into your comparative analytical paragraphs. Try and compare all the way through. There is a video on how to uh, write a top grade comparative um, essay on poetry in my playlist. So do go and have a little look. Then you've got your unseens. OK, now unseen again, comparison. Oh, at Excel, will you give it a break? Um, so the most important thing here is that you read those poems for meaning. Don't just devise spots. Some people go in and panic and then they're literally like, oh, there's a metaphor. Oh, there's an ABAB rhyme scheme. No, first things first, what is the poem about? 
Is it about appreciation of a person? Is it about a really amazing journey? Find out what the poem is about first. Once you've done that, read the second poem, figure out what that poem's about. Think similar, different. Then look for connections. Okay, ah, right, okay, this poem is about a journey that ends in something really exciting, whereas this one is about a journey that ends in something really devastating. So they're both about poet journeys, but with different impacts at the end. Okay, so find your connections, maybe three-ish, then annotate for features there. You're being assessed on your analysis of language, structure and form, as well as um, your comparisons. Obviously no context because we don't know where the poem's from. Um, again, there's a video on tackling unseens. That's quite a whip through. Hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, massive, massive good luck. Just breathe deep in that exam. You're gonna be absolutely fine. You've done all the prep and you're still prepping today. Um, you're gonna be golden. Please let me know how it goes. Good luck to all the people that I've been working uh, with over the last few months. Good luck to my Vic boys. I hope it all goes well. Everyone let me know how you do for the last time for literature for 2024. Happy revising. <laughs>